Hi there, recently I've been interested in the efficiency of models um, and how as a game artist I can do my best to make my models nice and efficient um, and ways of analysing whether my model is efficient. Um, a really great article you should uh, read is, is Beautiful Yet Friendly. If you, if you search for that you should be able to find this. Uh, it comes in two parts. Um, and uh, this guy, um, I think uh, Guillaume Provost, I'm sorry I don't know how to say that word name, but there we go. Um, has gone through the, uh, a lot of really interesting um, technical stuff targeted at game artists um, and we'll come back to, to this little bit here um, but for now we'll uh, jump into 3ds Max and let's take a look at this model which is one I did a, a while ago um, it's a fairly low um, sort of budget model you can see here um, 2600 triangles something like that um, so fairly cheap and I had thought this was a nice, good, efficient um, model, and it's not too bad. But um, I've got a few techniques for analysing it that I um, that I found that prove it to uh, you know not be perfect, which is fine. You know, learning exercises and everything. Um, so I'll just go through some of the things we can uh, use to assess how how good our model is, uh, how efficient it is. Okay, so I'll leave the wires on from now on. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is a modifier um, called. Pro Optimize. Now what this one does, um, you might have seen this in another video of mine, um, is you can use it to calculate um, all of the um, verts in your model and uh, using you know various settings um, shown below, but you know I won't go into those. Um, the idea here, what we can do is we can essentially reduce the target vertex count and start to see where the verts start disappearing from. Now if they start disappearing and we can't tell that they're going, you know, if the silhouette is entirely unchanged, the model looks pretty much the same, then we know that we've not got an efficient model. However, uh, I've done this before and the first ones to go, and the first ones to go will always be the most sort of unnoticeable ones, um, but it doesn't take long before we start noticing, you know, one goes there uh, from his sword, and you'll see them popping all over the place, a few on the face there, um, more from the sword and honestly um, I've barely taken any out and I'm already not liking the ones that it's decided are you know the first to go so um, I'm not going to accept any of these changes but um, it's good to know that I uh, I only went down as far as 97% and already I'm not happy with uh, sort of the hacks it's making into my model um, so that's pretty good f good news in terms of um, you know it's probably fairly efficient in terms of the shapes um, that I'm making with the triangles that I've got um, all of my triangles are making good shapes. Okay, uh, so that's the first one. Um, another little one that might be useful if you're if you're working with a game engine uh, that doesn't like certain things is STL check, uh, and this can can spot errors. Um, so you not, might not realize you've got open edges um, on sort of verts that you thought were, were closed and not probably welded or whatever. So I'm just going to go on open edge uh, and tick the check box. And that'll show me all the um, polygons with with open edges. Now, sometimes this will be a bit bit funny looking because um, this here is, is an engon, and I'll come on to that shortly. And it's only selected a part of that engon, um, the the triangle which has the open edge. Otherwise, it will. Um, if I, I think it, it's always picking triangles, isn't it? It's always showing you the triangles which have open edges, and of course, these have open edges on both sides of the quad. So of course, it's picking both both triangles. Um, so these are all in places that I, I am expecting them to be, um, yeah, I think, so there's no problems there. If I'd have found one um, maybe down here, I would have said, um, thought to myself, you know, maybe, maybe I've got a vert here that during the symmetry process somehow didn't get um, collapsed with its opposite half, um, but all of these are okay, so uh, no problems there. Um, there are other checks that it can do. Um, on mine it doesn't return any of these, but uh, a double face, if you've got two faces right on top of each other, that can be um, spotted with a double face, I guess. Um, I don't know what spike is. Um, multiple edge. <sighs> Anyone's guess. And everything is just all of the above. Um, so yeah, there's there's that. Uh, I mentioned before that um, I had an end gone. Um, and we can use uh, the graphite modeling tools. Um, now I believe this is uh, probably since 20, 2011, but uh, I might be wrong um, that this has been in. Certainly it's in 2012. Uh, we're going to open up the graphite modeling tools dialog. Uh, make sure that my uh, object is an editable polygon. I'm going to go to polygon. 
and under the selection rollout I have a whole host of different stuff. Now there's a couple of ways we can we can do this. There's a non-quads button right on the left which is probably the easiest to use uh, and we can see triangles and n-gons anything that it isn't a quad but uh, we might be okay with triangles and we might be only interested in, uh, in n-gons uh, and for that reason um, there is also a by numbers thing which unfortunately my screen is too small to show um, but right here we've got the uh, greater than, less than and equals uh, we're going to go with greater than four sides and then um, click this one here and that'll pick all the quads which have greater than four sides and we can see got one big one on his helmet um, got one on the the uh, back side of his um, I don't know what that is groin protector thing? I don't know uh, and a couple um, on either side of his handle thing um, so those should should ideally be fixed but actually there is a nice way we can fix those automatically now Bear in mind, this um, might not be as good as a human doing it, but um, I'll show you anyways. Um, so I'm going to uh, deselect those and um, just hop over to the modify tab again. And I'm going to apply a turn to poly modifier. Now, uh, with uh, with these settings here, uh, in fact, I'm going to actually, there we go. We can uh, essentially do nothing if we turn all of these off. Um, and in theory, this, this won't really be doing anything. Um, but we've got um, features here that allow us to um, make this more friendly for our game engines which are a bit uh, finickety about this kind of thing. Uh, but the one we're particularly interested in is limit polygon size. Um, with that as a max size of 4, that means that uh, any polygons which are, have more than 4 sides will be cut along edges. Um, every, every I'll show you this if you're not aware of this. Um, go to the display tab and scroll down to edges only. Um, if we turn off edges only we can see that even even quads are split into triangles. They, they may sort of be more of a theoretical split but they're, they're definitely um, split in one direction or another. Uh, and before the um, uh, let me, before the turn to poly you can see we had actually split this end gone and this is done automatically for you. This isn't something that I'd done particularly. Um, so this is, this is already done. Before that um, it had already got splits and now that we've got the turn to poly with the max size on it's only going to follow those that are already there uh, in order to make quads. Anyways, we've, we've also got um, keep polygons convex and uh, an interesting one here, uh, require planar polygons. Now I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to slide this way up so you see it doing nothing. Right, With a very high number it'll probably do nothing. As we decrease this number we can actually spot, um, and this isn't the best way to spot them, but it's it's a way. I'm going to turn um, turn the edges only back on. Um, twisted quads, uh, which are any quads. Perhaps if I turn this off, uh, no, we'll we'll detect one this way, and I'll zoom in and maybe talk about it there. So I'm just going to roll this down. Oops, too far. Until we see the worst offenders. This collarbone that might be good to look at. Okay, so bear in mind that this was a quad. Let's um, turn that off, and you can see it's a quad there. I'm going to select it, I'm going to hit Z to zoom in on it, I'm just going to rotate around it, and we'll see why it's picked up on that. Um, but what we've got here is a um, this quad, which you would expect to be flat. When you look at it at this kind of angle, you can see it's uh, got a twisted along its um, along, along this line, this sort of theoretical line that we talked about before. I'll turn that off, and you can see it's there when we zoom into it we can see it's got this sort of twisting problem. What uh, turn to poly will do is it will cut those uh, along those lines um, based on what your your threshold angle is uh, and really anything above 20 you should um, you should try and deal with. Uh, but what we're going to do instead of actually cutting them is uh, we're going to leave the turn to poly on uh, I'm going to turn off my edged faces um, and I'm going to leave it on at about 20 and I'm going to go with the editable poly selected and show end result on. I'm going to go into my graph up modeling tools. I'm going to go to uh, freeform. I'm going to use push pull, or I could use relax often. Um, now these have uh, have a bunch of commands that if you're not familiar with what this does, um, you should read up on. But for right now I'm just going to use the relax bit of it. I'm going to scale down the size again. Just mouse over to uh, find out what these controls are. I won't really bother explaining because it does a great job here. Press Y for a little video. Um, it's pretty cool. Anyways, um, and small strength. I'm going to hold down Shift to relax it. Now, what I'm doing with this is, is by relaxing it, I am 
uh, encouraging it to be much more flat. And you see now that I did that, the, um, the turn to poly modifier is no longer um, recognizing it as a problem. Um, we can do this on any of our, our badly formed. You can of course end up by making more problems than we were solving. Um, and probably you should examine your problem before you jump headlong into it. So I needed to pull this one out and probably push this one back. Uh, and you can end up chasing these around and, and messing things up, but you know, it's uh, one way of doing it. Hey, we fixed that. Um, no, wrong way. Anyways, that's uh, one, one little way you can s identify skewed um, skewed polygons, uh, but I do recommend you um, try and fix any that are certainly any more than 30 degrees. Okay, uh, another thing that you should always try and use um, to the best of, of its uh, limits is um, when you're unwrapping your UVs um, you should try and use all of your um, texture space. It's a fairly obvious statement to make but I'm making it anyway. Um, so I'm just going to look at uh, one of my um, IDs here and uh, I'm going to analyze how much of my UV space I'm using. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use a render UV template and uh, I'm going to turn off the edges and I'm going to make my fill white and I don't care about overlap um, and change the mode to solid and I'm going to render it and here we have a um, black and white uh, where white is being used and black is not being used uh, and we're going to um, either copy that into Photoshop or save it and open Photoshop or whatever, it doesn't really matter um, I happen to have it open already here it is, and um, <laughs> this is a really silly Photoshop interface for 720p. Um, anyways, uh, get rid of this. Go away. Don't want you being this wide. Oh well. Um, what w all I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go to my magic wand, which is uh, if you've got quick selection there, it's under there. Um, I want, you know, tolerance 14 is fine, contiguous, I want to make sure that is off, I do not want contiguous, and uh, just pick my white, a white colour, that will select all of that. Now open up your histogram, which uh, you might be able to find under window histogram, or mine's right there, uh, and we get a pixel count here, so 199253, and it's time for our calculator. Uh, and I will do 199253, which is uh, just this number here, and then I will move that to one side, uh, deselect everything, and we get a new number. This is our total number of pixels in the whole thing. So we're going to do this number divided by uh, 262144, which is our total number of pixels, and we can see we are using 76% of the pixels in the UV texture space. Um, so that is a way of calculating how much we're using. Now, 76% is pretty bad, um, but you can forgive me a little bit because it's a character, and um, you know, characters kind of awkward shapes to fit into each other. If you were doing something with more um, square shapes then you'd certainly be expected to probably be hitting at least 80%, maybe 85% because you know they fit together better. Um, so forgive me. Anyways, uh, the final thing I want to talk about um, is actual vertex count. Now in the uh, article I recommended at the very beginning um, we have uh, a diagram here which demonstrates how um, the vertex count in your modeling package, um, so I'm using 3ds Max, um, but I believe a lot of them display vertex count the same, is uh, is r sort of wrong. And um, honestly, triangle and polygon counts aren't even as useful as vertex count, and vertex count isn't as useful as actual vertex count. Um, when I say actual vertex count, I am I'm essentially counting the number of um, vertex positions sent through the GPU pipeline. Um, because that's essentially how long it takes, that's, that's a more accurate number of how long it will take to render that object. Uh, and that is a factor of several things. Now, what we've got here is an illustration A, which is showing the combinations of B, C, and D. We've got a, we've got a shape here, uh, know, like a, a little dial maybe, uh, and we can see it's been split into two materials, uh, in this sort of along the middle, um, uh, horizontally. Uh, vertically it's been split into two different UVs and of course there's three different shading groups. Now what that results in is being split into patches of these sections but of course at each of these points, so so in this, this little bit here 
we have four vertices because it has to be sent through four times. You see that? Anyways, that's the theory. Um, let's see how we can count it. Now, I got a uh, script from, I believe it's from the guy that wrote this, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, this is where it's at, this horrible address here. I'm, I'm sorry, you're going to have to type that in. Um, but you might be able to search for it. Uh, search for Uber vert count. Um, that'll probably find it. But otherwise, just you know, pause the video, copy that down, whatever. Um, and that will be a macro script for 3ds Max. Um, you need to install that into your whoop, um, program files, Autodesk, 3ds Max, scripts, startup folder. Um, do put it in your startup folder, I think. Anyway, you will then need to uh, customize your interface so that you can um, see it, uh, or at least that's the easiest way to use it, um, because hopefully you'll be using it a lot. So I've got mine uh, down here. Um, that was just customize, customize user interface, um, go down in toolbars to U for Uber, Uber vertex count or vert count, and just drag it over and then you'll get it. But uh, I've already set mine up. With your editor poly selected, I do recommend you collapse it down to editor poly. I don't know what happens if you have other stuff on there. Don't really care to find out. Um, click it. And we get some options. Now click the question mark for a description of what these all are. Um, but uh, but know that MV is more like, um, well it is the, the the number of verts we have. Whoops, here. It should be anyway. Uh, and when we do click do it, and it'll take a little while to calculate this. Okay, and the results are in. Um, so as you can see, mesh vertices is the same number of verts um, here. But we also have figures for other stuffs. Um, the lower the number, the le less efficient um, your mesh is. So uh, I'm sitting on um, 76 for UVs and smoothing groups. Um, those are the breaks, I guess. Um, you can see this is about 2,000 sort of in-game verts for that. Um, breaks in the in the UV coordinates, um, so anywhere that I um, let's see, maybe around the arm joints, that maybe I detach those. I can't remember. Certainly under the armpits, I think um, that sort of stuff. That is more expensive if you if you have lots of breaks. But the bit that's really hurting my score here is the uh, TS, which if we click on question mark, we can see two-sided materials. Um, because I've got all my materials on two-sided, I'm down to optimized level 47%, which is um, pretty bad. Um, so I'm just going to change those now. I'm doing that off screen, so it, I promise you it is happening. Hum hum. Uh, this is something that I would have turned on because of probably the cloth or something. Um, but what I could do instead is just have two-sided on the only on the bits that uh, really need it. Um, but anyways, let's uh, calculate that again. Okay, pro tip: change it to an editable mesh. It's about. 15 times faster. It was a lot faster. Anyways, um, you can see now that's up to 100%, and my optimized level jumped from 44% to 60%, which is a big change, and uh, makes my model a lot um, more efficient. Um, so, yeah, this Ubervert count is pretty cool. If you read the the article, you'll sort of understand why what what I'm doing here and what we're seeing here is actually pretty important. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty pretty impressed with this um, Ubervert count. Hopefully something you saw here was helpful to you, and I wish you luck in optimizing your assets.